Hi, Johnny Vandeford here, Lorain County Community College's MEMS and Microelectronics Manufacturing Program, as well as Merit Manufacturing Electronics and Rework Institute for training. I'm actually in the process of recording a couple of instructional videos for a couple of trainees that are coming in next week to do some training on how to program up a SMT pick and play system. In particular, they're going to be learning how to program the Panasonic NPM-W2, which is Let's see, that's the stencil printer. There's the arm runs. There it is, way in the back there. There's our there's our system there. That's our Panasonic NPM W2 uh, SMT pick and play system. And so uh, it just got me thinking. I haven't done an update in a while. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, create a little bit of an instructional video that may be of uh, some help to someone with it there. I'm actually just about to create a video uh, on the computer that's, uh, that I've got over here. This is our programming computer, one of our well, one of our many many programming computers that's over here where we can train uh, several people at one time uh but ultimately uh we're about, uh, the video i'm about to make is all about how to program in uh the parts that need to be obviously the pick and play system has to uh uh pick up and place down uh, parts so you have to tell it uh, a couple of things and there's three key things that are needed if you want to successfully program in um a part on the system there so uh, if I, for instance, load up, let's load up uh, one of these parts that are with it here. Here I've got the uh, SOYC8 chip that's with it here. I'm going to kind of move in as close as possible here. So I'm like filming a screen of a screen with this here, but it's just uh, my software in terms of where it is. So there are three things that are needed in order to program up any part. Uh, the first thing that's needed for the part is to actually program in the size of the part. Uh, this is the geometric size. This is um, how big our how big are the, the leads that are on the part right there? You see the, the leads that are there. How big is the length and width of the uh, part, the overall height of the part, the size of each lead? Uh, several pick and play systems like ours actually have the ability to program in um, the uh, recognition of the actual part itself in case the wrong uh, package of chip is being placed down. It can actually say, wait, wait after a few uh, attempts to place it and scanning it and using the camera, it'll say, no, 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 wait, stop, the, the wrong size chip has been programmed in uh, or maybe the leads are bent or something like that and it just doesn't like the chip and after i think three of them in a row it'll just stop production and say halt there's there's not something that's needed but you need to program in um the size of the part um for this here the size of a particular name of part for this one here as well uh the next thing that's located directly to the left of that is how it is fed into the system uh, is it a tape and reel? Is it a tray? Is it a is it a a, a bar, if you will? Uh, is it being just fed in on a you know how is it being uh, ultimately pushed into the system for that? Uh, perhaps you've designed a 3D printed tray that's meant to fit a specific size part that just like you just had to buy a bunch of them with it, or like this one right here, we have to program in the tape and reel that it's embossed, meaning plastic tape and reel, uh, with tape width of 12 millimeters in size, the tape pitch, the pitch being the distance between one part and the next part equidistant to one another on the, ta on the tape and reel, um, how deep into the pocket um, the uh, part happens to be, how many parts are on the actual tape and reel, what's the size of the tape and reel, um, et cetera, for that. And then the third thing, which is less obvious to see, in fact, it's, it's less obvious, but it's really, really important, is actually up that's over here. It's the nozzle selection, if you will. So the nozzle selection is which nozzle is available to pick up the the chip. Uh, and you can program up to five in prioritized order that can actually pick up the chip. You've got the uh, nozzles that are located over here. Here's the uh, one particular nozzle. You can get a graphical idea of where that pickup location is going to be. Here's another one that we've got here that's going to pick this up. That's a different size vacuum pickup tip. Here's one that's actually loaded in the back of the uh, of our system here that can pick up this chip here. And here's another one we've got in here. You can actually program offsets as well. So say for instance, for whatever reason that this chip need, cannot be picked up right in the center, that there's, that there's some, uh, I don't know, feature on the chip or something like that. Well, I can actually take this and let's just say, for instance, I've got to set it off center by negative one millimeters in X, just to say, please pick it up instead 
over in this location here. You can actually program that location in advance for that here if you needs to be programmed in for that specific spot for that. And just in case, that's just automatic. Um, that's just automatically done uh, with the actual uh, system itself. We'll redraw it back to the center for that there. Uh, and it pulls from your available nozzles that you've got in your uh, in your library. So any nozzles that you have that's here. And if one nozzle needs to be prioritized more than the other, say for instance, this 130 needs to be prioritized. I can actually move it up to the top for this one here and say, try to pick as much as time. Maybe this is like just the right nozzle for this part with it here, but leave this one up at the top part of it there always for that though. That's the one I wanted to pick from. And oh, if, it, if those are all not available, well, there's other ones here you can try and pick from with it here in order to pick them up. But I really want to have that one up at the top part of there. So, but yeah, uh, ultimately, uh, those three are required to, for each little part that has its name to be programmed. Then that's something very, very important. There's other features that are in there. There's a lot of other features that are associated with those. But if you don't have those three, if you don't have how big it is, how it's being fed in, and how it's being picked up or what's picking it up, uh, it just won't do any of the rest of the features that are uh, ultimately associated with the pick and place program. So cool deal. More to come later on videos, hopefully, if I've got spare time from Lorain County Community College's MEMS and Microelectronics Manufacturing Program, as well as Merit Manufacturing Electronics and Radio Institute for Training. Leave comments down in the comments below if you want to see other videos that are kind of like this. Or if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them as much as possible. And we will see you around on the next one, folks. See you later. Bye-bye.